Hi, hey, welcome to Online Appliance Tech. Today we have a exciting video. We're going to show you how to fix a display on the LG that will not work with aluminum. So if yours is like this and will not start, let's show you how to fix it. That's right, with aluminum. First thing you want to do is unplug it. One thing you might want to do if you do have a multimeter, do check your outlet here to make sure you do have the 120 volts. In this case, I do know that we do have that. So you usually have one screw there and there, but in this case we only have the two or three up top. So just remove these screws. Actually three. Okay, great. So now you're gonna take your flathead and you're gonna come up under the lever or the latch here and just pry outwards and it should just pop right out. There's one, here's two. And just basically take your time, be gentle with it. Um, never force nothing too much because you could crack it. As you can see here, it'll definitely give eventually. There we go. So as you can see, we have clips. It just basically clips in. So you have to, I guess you would say pry it out, but gently okay, put that out of the way. So right here you have two clips, one on the right, and you also have one on the left. So you'll basically come in with a flathead screwdriver and press it towards the right side, like on your right, it'll be towards your right. So you'll push in and press towards your right. And as you press this in towards your right, you'll kind of press that forward. Let's see if I can show you a little better. So that one's in, and this will be pressed towards the left. So press it towards the left and press it forward. And then you should be able to pull this right up and out. If it doesn't come out easy, just go back. That means it's probably clipped back into place. And just like as always, take your time. So press towards your right and press out. And then pull this straight up and out. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually holding it with my left hand as I press out on the right with this flathead. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Then you have two Phillips screws, one on the right and one on the left. So now you're going to take the display and you're going to lift kind of slightly up and forward. And then you'll turn the display towards its face. I recommend placing it on top of a towel or some type of protection. That way you don't mess up your display or the washer. Okay, let's get started. Now let's remove this top cover. This way we can disconnect the harnesses. So this is basically clipped into the main control board and it has one main screw that holds it to the main board. So just remove these screws. You want to remove this one and this one. Now you're going to take your flathead and under lip this and kind of, I guess, pry it outwards, but not too much because you do want to clip that back in eventually. So come under it and pry it upwards. Just be careful too not to cut your finger. Okay, once released, just gently kind of rotate it forward and remove. Okay, let's remove all the harnesses from the main board. This way we can work on it way easier. But don't worry about, you know, mix meshing or putting one where it shouldn't go because it can only go in one way. I 
I do recommend when you're trying to remove these harnesses from the main control board not to yank on the wire because you can rip the wire out of the harness. So as you can see here I'm using a flathead to kind of give it uh, the press in on the clip and then just pull upwards if that makes sense. Okay, so now we're going to remove the knob. So you just basically pull straight out and it'll just pop right off. That's pretty much it. Okay, now having the knob removed, this will make it more easier for me to remove the remaining harnesses. Okay, now let's remove the main board from the panel. So you'll take a flathead at kind of the same width of this, I guess you would call it a latch. And then we're gonna basically press in and any clips like this you have to have out because you don't wanna break it. But you'll press in and then forward. There you go. Okay, so now having the main board removed, this is the display control board and behind it is the main control. And this is the spring that activate, activates the uh, start button. As you can see, it goes right here. Okay, this is gonna save us. So this is called a Reynolds wrap, and this is basically how we're gonna fix it. That's right, Reynolds wrap. Something so simple. So take a little piece and flatten it out and kind of fold it together and make it kind of the, let me actually cut this in half, there we go. And then we're gonna put it over the spring like this and make sure it covers the spring and enough where it won't budge once we kind of face it towards the display. Okay, so first let's make sure it's gonna line up correctly. So you have these clips that goes into the display, it just clips in, and then you'll just press the control board forward. So let's put the aluminum on and hold it with your finger and then as you hold it with your finger, make sure it doesn't slide out of place and then clip your bottom in first. As you see the clips on the display, make sure your aluminum has not moved and then you'll just press your board down to click it in. Great. So everything's clicked into place. So now it's time to put everything back together and give it a test. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just connect all the harnesses back to the main control board. Like I said at the beginning, they can only go in one way, so you can't really mix match them or put one where it shouldn't go. As long as the harness fits directly into the main control board and you make sure that you connect obviously every one of them and you should have no problem. Okay, at this point I'm gonna plug it in. Just definitely be careful as soon as you plug it in not to touch nothing electrical where you can get shocked. But I just like to test it before I put everything back together because obviously I don't wanna take it back apart. So great, so we have a working unit now. So right away I would just unplug it and put everything back together as you can see it works. The power of Reynolds wrap. Okay, so now let's put everything back together. Oh, 
Okay, let's reinstall our two Phillips screws in the top panel. Okay, before installing the second Phillips screw, you want to make sure you have your wires tucked uh, nicely where it comes out the side of this uh, top cover. And just make sure you don't cut no type of, uh, or cut your wires, I would say, in the process. So just basically take your time and clip the bottom first, I would say, and then you'll clip your top over, hook it. Okay, so this Phillips screw will go through the cover into the display main control board. So line it up and just snug it. Don't over tighten it because you can crack the uh, display control board. I like to kind of press it down and make sure everything's nice and clipped in and cleaned up. So now let's install the display. So as you can see here, the display has two little, well, a couple of clips that clips into the housing of the washer. So you line it up and you basically just press straight down and line up the grooves with the display and the housing of the washer. It should slide right in and then you should line these two holes up. If you can see the holes that where you can screw it into, basically it means you're lined up. And once again, I recommend a hand tool or some type of drill that you're comfortable with because if you over tighten these two Phillips screws or it's too much torque, you will crack your display panel and then your display panel will be loose every time you press the button or so forth. Okay, let's install the knob. So the knob you'll just put on there and you'll kind of turn it clockwise until it slides down into place. So once it slides down into place, you'll just press it in. Okay, let's install the back panel. This just clips in. It's much easier to put in than take out. So once you have it clipped in, you'll install your three Phillips screws. So at the end of this video, we're gonna actually, well, I'll actually show you how to place this machine in diagnostic mode. That way you can make sure everything's working properly and so forth. It's a pretty uh, nice thing to know about your machine. That way in the future if you have any problems, you can just pop it in diagnostic mode and it should shoot any codes and you can see basically what's not working and so forth. Okay, so now let's install this lower panel. So I kind of go in the up position first and then I'll just press it back and it should click right into place. Okay, let's put it in diagnostic mode. So what you want to do is have your hands or your two fingers ready on your solid and your spin. And as soon as you press the power button, you're going to hold the solid and spin button down until it appears high in S. Then you press start and then it'll go through all the cycles automatically. And this is a good way to test each function. So like I stated in the beginning, you cannot advance through these tests. As you can see, I press the start, it does not move forward. So this is an automatic test. However, it does not take that long, and it's a good way to test all your functions, your cold water, hot water, agitation, and sensing, and so forth. Well, I hope this video was helpful, and please like and subscribe for more future tips and videos. If you have any questions, just please leave it in the comments below, and I'll try to make sure to get back to you. Thank you, and have a good day.